Good evening and welcome to this Wednesday midweek Lenten prayer service. Glad that you could be with us as we observe a Holy Lent. From the scriptures, we are gathered around this scripture sentence. O Lord, you are kind and forgiving, full of love to all who call on you. Listen to my prayer, O Lord, hear the cries of my pleading.
Let us give thanks for the light. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, the shepherd of Israel, their pillar of cloud by day, their pillar of fire by night. In these 40 days, you lead us into the desert of repentance, that in this pilgrimage of prayer, we might learn to be your people once more. In fasting and service, you bring us back to your heart. You open our eyes to your presence in the world, and you free our hands to lead others to the wonder of your grace. Be with us in these journey days, for without you we are lost and will surely perish. To you alone be dominion and glory forever and ever. Amen. I invite you now to hear our psalm for this evening. This is Psalm 143, a prayer for deliverance from enemies. Hear my prayer, O Lord, give ear to my supplications. In your faithfulness, answer me in your righteousness. Do not enter into judgment with your servant, for no one living is righteous before you. For the enemy has pursued me, crushing my life to the ground, making me sit in the darkness like those long dead. Therefore my spirit faints within me, my heart within me is appalled. I remember the days of old. I think about all your deeds. I meditate on the works of your hands. I stretch out my hands to you. My soul thirsts for you like a parched land. Answer me quickly, O Lord. My spirit fails. Do not hide your face from me, or I shall be like those who go down to the pit. Let me hear of your steadfast love in the morning, for in you I put my trust. Teach me the way I should go, for to you I lift up my soul. Save me, O Lord, from my enemies. I have fled to you for refuge. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Let your good spirit lead me on a level path. For your name's sake, O Lord, preserve my life. In your righteousness, bring me out of trouble. In your steadfast love, cut off my enemies and destroy all my adversaries, for I am your servant. Amen. And from the New Testament, this is from the letter to the Hebrews. It was fitting that God, for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For the one who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one Father. For this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters in the midst of the congregation. I will praise you. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, here am I and the children whom God has given me. Since, therefore, the children share flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared the same things, so that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is, the devil. 
and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by the fear of death. For it is clear that he did not come to help angels, but rather the descendants of Abraham. Therefore he had to become like his brothers and sisters in every respect, so that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God to make a sacrifice of atonement for the sins of the people. Because he himself was tested by what he suffered, he is able to help those who are being tested. From the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 2, verses 10 through 18. I'd like to share an excerpt from Mere Christianity by C.S. Lewis. He writes, People often think of Christian morality as a kind of bargain in which God says, If you keep a lot of rules, I'll reward you, and if you don't, I'll do the other thing. Lewis continues, I do not think that is the best way of looking at it. I would much rather say that every time you make a choice, you're turning the central part of you, the part of you that chooses, into something a little different from what it was before. And taking your life as a whole, with all your innumerable choices, all your life long, you are slowly turning this central thing either into a heaven creature or a hellish creature, either into a creature that is in harmony with God and with other creatures and with itself, or else into one that is in a state of war and hatred with God and with God, its fellow creatures and with itself. To be the one kind of creature is heaven. That is, it is joy and peace and knowledge and power. To be the other means madness, horror, idiocy, rage, eternal loneliness. Each of us at each moment is progressing to the one state or the other. That's from Mere Christianity by C.S. Lewis. This season of Lent and this evening prayer service in particular, perhaps, presents an opportunity for us to ponder our choices in light of what C.S. Lewis has written. I invite you now to take some deep breaths to quiet your mind and in prayerful reflection we can ask the Holy Spirit to lead us to review the choices we made this past day some choices we've made today were in harmony with God and with others and with our own conscience. Some choices today may have put us at odds with or in conflict with God and with others with our own conscience. As we bring to our mind and into our heart and into prayer the choices we've made this day the point is not to feel ashamed or condemned or prideful in the choices. The idea is to become more transparent to ourselves and to our merciful God in order that we might more fully comprehend God's boundless love and grace. For God sees us through compassionate eyes and through the agape-filled heart of Jesus Christ, the Savior. In the process of taking a moment like this, in the middle of our week, near the end of our day, the process of reviewing our choices, perhaps we might become more mindful of the choices we and others make amid the pressure cooker of life and all the better to fulfill the part of the prayer that says, Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. May God bless our spirits 
in this time together. Amen. Shall we be in prayer? We give you our praise and our thanks, O God, for all gifts of love we have received from you and for your persistent mercy in Jesus Christ. Especially, we thank you for the grace and peace of Jesus Christ. For all creatures with whom we share the earth, those whom we love, and those who have loved us. We thank you for the support and encouragement that we receive from others. We thank you, O Lord, for food and drink to share in your name. Tonight, O Lord, we give you our cares and our concerns, because we know that you are kind and care for your children in every circumstance. Especially, we pray for people who are living in poverty, struggling on the edge of homelessness. We pray for those who are sick or suffering. We pray for those who work for their healing. We pray for the caregivers. We pray for comfort and peace for those who are facing death. O God of all joy, fill our souls to overflowing with the fullness of your grace. In this season, keep us mindful of your triumph over the tragedy of the cross, your victory for us over the powers of sin and death, so that we may reflect your glory as disciples of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. And so, dear friends, may Almighty God bless, preserve, and keep us 
this night and forevermore. Let us go in peace to a restful night, and may God minister to you in your dreams. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.